Hello, welcome to Jewish Museum Milwaukee's Museum Moments. My name is Ellie Gettinger. I'm the Education Director at Jewish Museum Milwaukee, and I am delighted to be with you today on this chilly uh, Tuesday in February. Um, today we are celebrating what was a Milwaukee treasure. In fact, at one time was the oldest, longest running department store in Milwaukee, and really was a very unique place. Um, and really speaks to kind of our ability to tell stories. The story we're talking about today is Goldman's department store. You can see it there written twice on my screen. That's how important it is. And as like many of our stories, this story started like this in an archive box uh, that we have in the museum filled with some objects. And then we pulled from community stories and explanations and explorations. And today I have to thank, um, members of the Goldman family, in fact, Cindy Werner and Jill Weinschel, who both spoke with me about this, and Milt Pivar, who was the longtime owner of Goldman's department store. All of them added to this story and gave me some really interesting information to share with y'all today. So this is not just about archival information, this is about oral history and family stories. And that's where I think we uh, really thrive as a museum in telling our stories. So without further ado, Let's jump into Goldman's. Let's take your time machine and go back in time now. Goldman's was on Mitchell Street. And Mitchell Street is in South Milwaukee. And Mitchell Street, at the time that Goldman's was opening, there was a small, small, small Jewish community in South Milwaukee, but there wasn't that much going on there Jewishly. So it's kind of an interesting address. It was a Polish stronghold. And in fact, many of the... Uh, People who worked there had kind of either had Polish ties or ties to uh, countries in Eastern Europe. So there was a connection. But you can see on this picture of Mitchell Street from the 1950s that you can see Gimbel's is there. You see Goldman's in the background. So there are a number of Jewish owned businesses on there. Built Right was there for many, many years. Um, uh, Holtzman Furrier. So while Goldman's isn't unique in the fact that it was a Jewish owned business on historic Mitchell Street, it is. It was one of the kind of, you know, um, what they would call tent poles. The the you know the placeholders in that street that was really active. One of the interesting things about Goldman's is that around the corner was another Jewish-owned department store called Hills, and Hills was actually owned by another member of the Goldman family. So let me introduce you to this family. Um, this is. And this is actually one of the places where I would say from a research standpoint, we could do better. We have no real pictures of the Goldman family in the store in any kind of way. And this is the picture that I got from Cindy Warner of her father and grandfather. So they're the two gentlemen and her grandmother is also in this picture. Um, but her grandfather, Leo, with his father, Abraham, and his brother, Le Leopold, opened Goldman's department store in 1896. Their brother Isaac opened a store around the corner called Hills. And in no research that I did, could I find out why one part of the family opened one department store and one opened another. The family I did discover was born in Lithuania. Everybody came from Lithuania and they um, had been working as kind of peddlers of sorts. They had some sort of cart that they would go around both from some of the research that I said, as far as that I read, as far south as Illinois into Milwaukee, um, and the store developed out of that. Um, so the store is opened in 1896, and it becomes a kind of big, successful mainstay fairly quickly. Here are two, it's the same store, it's the same corner, but they uh, changed the facade in the 1950s and they add the sign that we'll get back to later and the clock that's on the side of the building. But this is what the uh, building looks like before the 1950s. And even that I think had been updated. This is, I think, uh, in the 1940s, this picture was taken. In the 1930s, there was a renovation that, uh, that changed the front windows a bit. Um, so I don't have a picture of what Goldman's looked like in its original incarnation, but as anyone who walked in knows that the floors are basically the same. You're in a three-story uh, building. It is a, uh, they're, they're, it, it's wide open, expansive. The radiators are out there. You see all of these kinds of old fixtures of a building that was originally 
set for purpose in 1896. It's a pretty amazing um, piece. Let's see, I have a, a comment and Robin Cohen, who is uh, is telling us the PYRs are cousins of her family. So we'll get to the PYRs. One of the things that I found to be really interesting as I was doing this exploration is we have some really interesting artifacts about this, including this is a contract from 1909, and it's actually signed by those three original owners, Abraham, Leppold, and Leo. And it's a lease agreement for the basement, that they are leasing out a portion of the basement. And this was pretty common. And in fact, Milt Pivar, who was the owner with his uh, brother-in-law, Jerry Lewis, from the 1980s to the 2000s, his father had leased the men's suiting department. And there were certain departments, electrical shoes, um, I can't actually figure out what the guy in the basement is selling that the family leased out. And Milt said that, you know, the reason they leased out the suiting is because they didn't want in that. The, the margins were different. The, the way you bought was different. You had to do a lot more alterations and custom fittings. And so they leased that piece out to Milt's dad. And he had uh, that operation from the 19 teens and Milt took it over at some point. And actually Milt worked there for over 60 years. It's an amazing story of loyalty. And you see that with a lot of the employees that many, many people there worked there for many years. So the Goldman family owned and operated uh, Goldman's until the 1980s when they sold to longtime employee Milt Pivar and uh, Jerry Lewis. And they kept the business running and working until 2007. Um, but Goldman's was kind of known as this institution with, a, it was kind of a quirky place even in its earlier days. And certainly by the time it was closing, some of the things it was known for were its sales. They would have these dollar day discounts and they would do um, all sorts of things. The big picture that you're looking at here is from its fifth, the 55th anniversary sale. So this is 1951. And if you can see in the, the smaller picture, the inset picture of the line of people waiting outside to get in, and there are all of these things, $1 for this, $1 for that, five for $1. Um, Howard Weinschel, who is a Milwaukee treasure in his own right and was kind of a leader in um, in the Yiddish theater and a number of different institutions talks about working at Goldman's in the 1920s and 30s. And he describes the process of getting the product to sell at these dollar days. Um, he says, you know, he would basically go to his good shirt manufacturer and say, hey, I'm going to sell your shirts for a dollar. What are you how, what are you going to give me for that? And in another instance, he had found a manufacturer willing to sell him 2,200 dozen, that's 26,400 if you were wanting to do the math, socks. And so he put together a deal that you could buy 10 socks for a dollar based on this deal where he was buying a dozen socks for 90 cents. The margins weren't great, um, uh, but but it was a way to get people in the door and sell a lot of stuff. Jim Goldman is, is coming on board here in the comments saying, let me know if you want to know where the Goldman name itself came from. Please enlighten us, Jim. Tell us. Uh, we would love to hear about it. Um, and I'll share it to the broader community. So this is one of the things they were known for. They had all sorts of different sales and things on sale. Um, one of the things we have in our collection are lots of these advertisings. And in particular, I loved this piece because it's something that I think if you didn't grow up with this, like me, if you're a little bit curious, this is a stamp book. You can see it's from the 50th anniversary. So this would be from 1946. It's their golden anniversary, hence it's gold. Beautiful. And, um, and I love that here in the front, it says a filled notebook is worth $1. Now you're like, okay, a filled notebook is worth $1, but look at how many pages this notebook has as I try and figure out where my camera is. It's just so many pages to fill, pages upon pages upon pages, and you can get a dollar off your product. Um, so that's one of the things they were known for. They were also known for having a great lunch counter. And the lunch counter, again, was something that they leased. Uh, here's a picture of Milt and Jerry at the lunch counter uh, at the end of the run. You can see a picture of, I believe that maybe, uh, I think this is a picture, this came from Cindy Warner, so there might just be a picture of people at the lunch counter. I don't think there are any members of the family there. It is a big lunch counter. And in fact, there are 57 seats here. So it could seat a pretty solid number of people. It was a big footprint 
Um, I know that right now the, the there's the talk of someone taking the counter. It actually was preserved. It's in storage somewhere in Milwaukee that they could put it into a restaurant in Milwaukee. Clearly no one's you know eating in this kind of proximity at this moment, but at some point it could be really fun. The other thing that Cindy shared with me is this is the re uh, the menu from the, the lunch counter right before Goldman's closed. And all I can say in looking at these prices is, how was I not going there for lunch every day if this is from 2007 and it's a bowl of soup is still 169, a hamburger is 129. I feel like this must've been a throwback menu. Um, but it's a pretty awesome uh, piece. And it's a thing that many of the neighborhood people remember going into Goldman's, having a lunch, having lunch there, uh, then, you know, getting their candy raisins. Candy raisins are definitely something that you see in a bunch of different places. Um, and other things like um, flower bag towels, things like that. Um, and the thing they became really well known for is having things that you couldn't find anywhere else. This is a picture of Milt's P-Bar with a pair of pants with a 72 inch waist. And here he says, we had a lot of odd items, candy raisins. We specialized in hard to find and hard to fit items. We had pants up to 72 inch waist and sold bras big enough to cover the domes. Besides the merchandise, the family, it was predominantly a Polish neighborhood. You could walk on Mitchell Street and know most everybody. Um, and so Milton Jerry kept the business running till 2007. And in fact, in a lot of articles I read, they had, you know, pretty good sales going in, but just, you know, by the time they were closed into, or they sold in 2007, they were kind of done. It was, you know, they were both getting older. They didn't have family members that wanted to take over the business. So they sold in the hopes that it would stay open. It did not. Um, and Jim is illuminating the Goldman's name. Thank you. He says, this story might be apocryphal, but our Lithuanian family name was Yagalevich. I'm going to guess that that's how that you said it. When they opened a bank account at Mitchell Street, the bank wanted a different name and said, since you're Jewish, we're calling you Goldman. And they added an N given Milwaukee's German culture. Uh, and the man with the pipe on the phone is my father, says Jim. So we got to go back to that picture and look again. The pipe and the phone. Oh, I see it. Yep. The man with the pipe. That's uh, so is uh, that's uh, your father. Is that Alan Goldman? Um, and uh, Susan is pointing out that she used to buy upholstery fa fabrics. I hear that that was Leo's particular specialty, that keeping the fabrics and having lots of those things that you couldn't find other places like upholstery fabric was one of his particular niches. Goldman's after it closes continues to live on. You see lots of stories about Goldman's in the past couple of years. So for instance, the lunch counter, there was a video of it. It's in storage in Milwaukee. Um, and there was a whole saga around the Goldman sign where the group from old Milwaukee wanted to buy it. Adam Levin from old Milwaukee wanted to buy it so that it could be put up and reinstalled um, on historic Mitchell street that ended up falling through. And it's now at, uh, a uh, museum in Cincinnati. But I mean, the whole, there was this whole ongoing thing and there's this tremendous sense of love and passion towards um, towards the Goldman name, the brand, the, the department store. And I feel like it's one of those places that would be so popular if it still existed today, that this would be a millennial hangout. People would love all the things you could find from Zoot Suits to, you know, rabbit's foots to, of course, whatever candy ravensons happen to be, someone's going to have to send me some because I've never had them. So thank you guys for joining us for this special edition of uh, Museum Moments. Next week, we're going to be exploring Purim and talking about the tradition, particularly around Purim spiels. I'm pretty excited. We're going to be joined by Jeremy Stein, the Chazan at uh, Congregation Beth Israel near Tamnid. Um, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to, to message me here. Thank you to again to Milt Pivar, Jill Weinshell, and Cindy Warner for their help in putting this together. Always thank you to our supporter, Robin Cohen, who makes sure that we can get you these museum moments. If you want to learn more about Jewish Museum Milwaukee, go to jewishmuseummilwaukee.org. You can check out our upcoming opening. Actually, we have an opening this Thursday night. And the big connection between Goldman's Department Store and 
our exhibit to paint us to live that is that the guy our artist from to paint us to live actually designed uh, department store windows so we think it's kind of a nice connection um and if you have any other questions feel free to message me thanks so much and have a great day